Secret Service of the NDA. It gives us great pleasure to know you are there. Keep in faith with us and so we welcome you to that program which has its fingers on the pulse of the motion picture industry in Nigeria and beyond. Nigerian Movies Today. Every week we seek to bring you all you need to know about the movie industry and its players. For certain, this week is not going to be an exception. I am Lucy Ulubi. Today, we bring you adequate information on major players in the industry with a focus on the producer by excellence in our exclusive guest chats. We'll also take you to the street to get the opinion of Nigerians while also beaming our searchlight on that Nigerian making us proud outside the shores of this country. Let's begin with our movie of the week. Our movie of the week today is Unconditional. An emotional piece with an ingenious storyline, Unconditional, a 2014 drama nominated in the Movie of the Year category at the 2014 Nigerian Movie Academy Awards, tells the story of a mother's true love while showing the extent to which she can go to protect, ensure and secure the happiness of her children. Produced by Uche Jumbo Rodriguez and directed by Ike Chuku Onyeka, this thought-provoking movie features a cast of Uje Jumbo Rodriguez, popular comedian Lequashus Bose, Dakore Akonde, Ani Makoli Idibia, Bayo Bankole, and Ruth Kadiri, alongside several others, with a special appearance by Isabel Agahoa. The storyline revolves around Gina, played by Uche Jumbo Rodriguez, Mrs. Peters, played by Dakore Akonde, Olaju Mobi and Sarudin, a role played by Lepashos Bose, and of course, Isabella and Gabriella, or better still, Amanda Peters, a role beautifully interpreted by Isabel Arahua. Unconditional tells the story of Gina, a devastated mother of a set of twin girls, whose eight months old daughter, Gabriella, was kidnapped from her car seat on their way home. She makes it her mission to find her missing daughter so she could be reunited with her twin and the rest of the family, no matter how long it takes. I'm here to see your mom. Is she in? Yes, she's in. Oh, good. Uh, I saw you on TV. You, you did good. Thank you. Um, it was fun because um, I'm good in math. You're a very intelligent girl. Thank hey. you. How are you? Amy! Oh. Mom! Mom! Look! This is the one I see in my dreams! That is your mother? Yeah. What is this? Is this a joke? Because I have adoption papers that prove otherwise. If you think you're one of those women who you just dump their children and then come back years later with some kind of soft story, you were in the wrong house. Now please. Your miserable photographs and I never want to see you again. But you will, Mrs. Peters. She is my child. Whatever. Just leave my house and make sure you leave a forwarding address because you will be hearing from my lawyers. They will make sure they send you the letter of authorization that proves that she is my child. Now leave my house! I am not leaving. This is not a joke. Let's now take a look at the entertainment tidbits. Besides, there are no more innocent people in this world. Precious memories, unseen angels, sent from somewhere to my soul. Death is said to be the only ultimate end of every human being, irrespective of race, tribe, or color. The Nigerian motion picture industry, through the president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, Ibn Abofi Berisima, 
in a phone conversation confirmed the passing on to glory of an ace Nollywood actor, Muna Ubiqui, to the shock of many lovers of the Nollywood industry. Hello, we have lost Muna. Muna Ubiqui passed on. Okay. He had kidney failure, two kidney fail. We were not aware of his illness, okay? Okay. We do not neglect, anybody don't neglect our own. We didn't know of his illness, we just heard he died. My message to Nigerians is that Mona is a wonderful person. At this time, I think we all should pray for his soul and we all should pray for his family. Mona Obiekwe died in Lagos on the 18th of January 2015. He died as a result of a kidney disease. Until his death, the Inugu-based actor was one of Nollywood's multi-talented actor who interpreted both good and ugly roles professionally. Muna Obiekwe has featured in several Nigerian movies such as Unstoppable, Eyes of the Goats, Blackberry Babes, just to mention a few. Adieu Muna Obiekwe, you rose from a humble beginning yet achieved an amiable fate as an actor of immense reckoning. Late Munna Obiekwe was born in 1979 from the Nigerian Movies Today crew and on behalf of all whose lives you impacted through the movies, we say rest in peace. We shall continue to remember you. It's time now to meet our exclusive guest for the week. Our exclusive guest this week is Lancelot Odua Imaswin. Born on 22nd June 1971 in Uhokosa town, who won the local government council at those dates into the family of Chief and late Madam Godwin Imaswin, Lancelot is a film director, screenwriter, film producer and United Nations ambassador for peace. He began his education at Ogoala Primary School and later at Hosa Grammar School all in Benin City. There at Egosa Grammar School, he developed a passion for arts and drama, which has metamorphosed into something worthy of celebrating today. While in secondary school, he was the president of the Dramatic Society in Egosa Grammar School, winning several awards and prizes for the school at drama competitions all over Benin City and beyond. In a bid to further develop this passion, he proceeded to the University of Potakot after his secondary education, and there he studied theater arts. Lancelot, better known as the governor, began his career as an actor with a church drama group at the New Benin Baptist Church. While as a director, he started at the tender age of 19 with the Evangel Theater, a television gospel drama series in Benin City from 1988 to 1991. Upon graduation from the university, Lancelot Imaswin moved to Lagos and joined the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, as a production assistant. At age 26, Lancelot directed the film Yesterday, a film based on the ills of female genital mutilation and one which shot him to limelight. Today, the governor is inarguably one of the most celebrated filmmakers in Nigeria with over 200 successful movies to his credit. He is a founding member of the Directors Guild of Nigeria, DGN, and the first Nigerian filmmaker to be a guest on the CNN screening room. Some of his most celebrated works include Isakaba, a trilogy, Games Men Play, Games Women Play, Critical Decision, Private Sin, Close Enemies, the first Nigerian film to be shot in Hollywood featuring a Nigerian cast and an American crew, Open Heavens, and his very latest work, Invasion 1897. Local and international awards to his credit include 2004 Best Director City People Awards, 2007 Great Benin Merit Awards, in 2009 Best Director City People Awards, Career Achievement Award at All Leadership Awards in the USA, 2010 Best Director Tara Kota Awards, 2011 United Nations Ambassador for Peace, 2012 Best Director Nollywood Film Critics Awards, USA, and so many more. 
Lancelot Odwa Imaswen is a positive minded filmmaker and a social crusader. Please join me as I make welcome Lancelot Odua Imaswe. You're welcome to Nigeria Movies today. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. They call you the governor. How did you end that name? <laughs> I, I was on set uh, 2001 in Enugu and um, we just pulled some creative st stuff and uh, AGK Asiebo uh, called me the governor for the first time and uh, that's how I started, he stayed. You're one of the pioneers of what is known as Nollywood today. Mm -hmm. Now, why did you uh, go into movie production as at the time you did in Nigeria? Well, I think I was born into the arts. I spent uh, over 34 years of my 40 something years in life as an artist. Um, one person that has not had the opportunity to do any other thing in life other than art. Uh, we've had the opportunity to transverse from one aspect of the arts to another, from the stage to street to, to studio singing, dancing, choreography, acting, and what have you. And uh, I studied theater arts. And uh, I was also opportunity to have worked here uh, in NTA as a contract uh, staff uh, years past. And um, I think act is my life. I'm not sure I probably would have been able to do any other thing today, if not art. So whenever I'm asked this question, I just say, well, act is my life. So when the motion picture industry, as it is now called Nollywood, started, uh, I knew this was the place for me. Now, a, a lot of your films tell um, tribalism, poverty, sometimes witchcraft, and even um, folk beliefs. What is responsible for this trend? Well, I think um, art, as it's at the same, it's um, entirely for us to use our art to correct societal ears. And uh, from where we come from, we as uh, Nigerians, as Africans, we must be able to present things that are with us to the people. I have done movies on uh, for social reformation. I first drew attention of uh, people to the issue of uh, widow rights, uh, circumcision, uh, female genital mutilation, and uh, all that. So I primarily use my art as a corrective um, um, instrument for the society, and you particularly want to pick on issues that are with us to to to, to correct them to okay. say oh this is the way to go this is where not to go so that is what takes one run all of these things that you have uh, mentioned using art uh, as a corrective to a motion picture for social reformation of late i'm doing pure cultural works to uh, like i've just uh, discovered that uh, you cannot like at this point in time for us as a country we cannot just move forward without looking back to where we're coming from to forge a greater future for ourselves now looking back at where we are coming from i'm talking about the industry now mm -hmm. and what it is today what would you say have been the gains and the losses of the industry uh, the industry has been able to strive on its own without um, major support corporately institutional support and what have you the practitioners have been able to do the much they've done all by themselves would have probably gone beyond this if at the initial stage we had governmental support we had corporate support we had institutional support or fundings like it is in other climb where there are funds for filmmaking you can go there pull from the pool and um, the issue of um, distribution has also been a problem um, piracy that has actually limited the strength of what we would have been able to achieve now as practitioners. But um, f uh, recently, we have been getting this particular government, not trying to be political. Uh, well, um, we have had uh, laudable um, uh, contribution by this present government in terms of realizing that this is a very major industry in our national life. Uh, over 10 million people are employed directly by this industry or indirectly. Um, it has brought a lot of uh, positive 
um, image for our country that this is a creative country where people are ingenious, are able to do one thing or the other. So if you look at that, uh, from where we're coming from to where we are, a lot of the losses have been the government um, support, institutional support has been has not been too great until recently. So imagine if the kind of support we are having have, have been there from the day one, the losses would have gone miles, miles, miles ahead. What, in your own opinion, can be done to improve the earning capacity of the industry? Uh, number one, there is need for infrastructure, infrastructural support. Uh, the Nigerian film policy has it that every local government in Nigeria, 774 local government, each of them should be situated with at least a viewing center for movies. Okay. So you can imagine if first and foremost, 774 viewing centers for movies are on ground. The kind of returns that the industry will be able to make. But sadly, we have less than 21 functioning cinema in Nigeria to service 160 or 170 million people. So uh, it's, it's an aberration. Uh, in in uh, just a city, in some other worlds, you have thousands of cinemas in just one city or hundreds of cinemas. So this is one major area where we can begin to return to the way things are done, as far as this business is concerned, globally. Mm -hmm. A production is ended. Then we can also begin to uh, have some kind of affiliations with big ugly, uh, media organizations like NTA and several others where uh, the filmmaker, first and foremost, the organization begin to see the business of filmmaking as not just putting money into somebody's ass pocket, but helping the society. When they, uh, like we are talking about youth restiveness, we are talking about corbin of uh, uh, electoral violence and all of that, the industry can be a veritable tool for such achievement, hmm. bringing people to be more interested in the business that are aware that, oh, even as a carpenter, the industry can pay me. Even as a technician, the industry can pay me. Even as, um, as a driver, the industry can pay me. As a fashion designer, the industry can pay me. So once the income of the industry improves by way of infrastructure and government put in place a um, mechanism to fight piracy, all of the state governments, not just only the federal government, are showing interest more so interest in this business that is very attractive and lucrative to youths. Hmm. Local governments must also show interest so that each local government can, okay, fine, we can put up viewing centers, one, two, three, where filmmakers can come and have people come to patronize these things by way of getting more income. They more people will come into the industry, more revenue will come for the, for, for the practitioners, and the government is having less problem curbing a lot of the violence that is going on right now. Very Most well. of your movies have been done in Benin City. Why is it like that? Give back. I started my arts from there, and um, I'm also using my art, the resounding success we've been able to make to motivate other people. Mind you, uh, those states we are the minority minority and uh, being able to have uh, gotten to a certain level in the business one should be able to get close to his people and use my art as a motivation for others yeah. invasion 1897 what is the inspiration behind that movie i just felt that it was time for us to actually tell our story such a global story such renowned story Whenever you Google the internet, you see uh, Benin 1897, you see the Benin massacre uh, directly from the point of view of those that wrote the story, the white guys. I won't come of age, and as a filmmaker, I just thought that it's important now that uh, such stories, because before we will not attempt such stories because of the funds that will be, that is, that will be required to actualize such a film. Uh, so, okay, it's important that now we try very hard to see how we can tell such stories. You have seen Shaka Zulu, you have seen um, um, uh, films like uh, The Last King of Scotland. All these are African stories told from a Western perspective. So for this, for this one time, I just felt, okay, such a huge, uh, uh, gigantic story should be told from our point of view, unapologetically from our point of view. Uh, what went wrong? Where did the massacre take place? 
what motivated the massacre. And of course, uh, our people were without blemish. It also was important that this story is told this time because we were also looking at uh, the Nigerian centenary celebration. Mm -hmm. And that story, that story, though uh, not giving the kind of, uh, giving the kind of uh, attention it deserves from the Nigerian country, it's important that we know that uh, probably if Benin didn't fall in 1897, there wouldn't have been in Nigeria. Now we've seen invasion 1897. What do we expect from you? What is next for you? It's a new year. Film. What do we expect from you? Film, film, films. We'll be making films, mm -hmm. getting full into production. Uh, we just had a very successful discussion with the management of NTA. Uh, this is all we can do. There's a whole lot we can change with what we are doing. So we want to get involved more into production, television series, talk shows, basically films that will remake us as a people. <laughs> Your fans are there. What do you have to say to them? Thank you so much for the support. These 20 years wouldn't have been possible without you. I made the first, my first film was an Igbo language film. And uh, the industry too has been able to unite the country. You see actors from the north, from the west, from the east, all of us come together to make a, a production. So all these uh, have been made possible because you've been there supporting a uh, lot. I want to appreciate the Nigerian audience. I want to appreciate my Bini people. I appreciate Lagos that has housed us all this while. God bless you and keep watching Movies Today on NTA. Thank you, Lancelot Odua Imasre, for coming on Nigerian Movies Today. We appreciate it. Yes, I've been chatting with Lancelot Odua Imasre, an ace producer, director, and also a screenwriter. I hope you've had so much to learn from it, because I, I did. Such incisive discussion about the movie industry with our guest, and I'm sure you've learned a thing or two. It's time now for us to take a sneak preview of our interesting movies to watch this week. Do enjoy them. Interesting movies to watch this week are Jumper and Pass. Don't open this door. Don't open this door. So would you rather have robbers kill our neighbors out there? Auntie Vera, please, we don't have burglary proof on our doors. One kick and our door came in. Please open the door, please. Don't, don't worry, I'll protect you. King Herod. Your father is dead. You're the crown prince. You're the next Igwe. According to the customs and rites and traditions. I want you to reject that throne. Reject the kingship, not only for yourself, but for your entire family and your entire lineage. And matters arising. This woman has refused to cook my dinner. Mm -hmm. I'll have to beg her, especially at night. I didn't know where that came from. I traveled all the way to Isabu to buy a perfume, powder, lipstick. She told me she cannot rub lipstick because of her church. What kind of rubbish is that? It's yogu. Yes! Huh. My favorite soup. She doesn't know how to prepare. Thank you for staying tuned. The program is still Nigerian Movies Today. Every week on this program, we seek those individuals who are based outside the country but doing the nation proud in the area of movies or stage productions. Please meet our Nigerian star in the diaspora. Ani Ngozi Ilonze, an American actor of Nigerian descent, was born in Grapevine, Texas in the United States of America in 1983 to a Nigerian father and a Caucasian-American mother. Known for her role as Mia Wood on the ABC soap opera General Hospital, Annie Ilonze obtained her university education at the University of Texas at Arlington. She made her television debut in 2007 in an episode of the CBS series How I Met Your Mother, after which she progressed to other television series and movies. She featured in movies like He's Just Not That Into You in 2009, where she played the role of Hot Girl, Beautiful Girl No. 2 in Miss Match in 2009, 
Aphrodite Girl in Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief, in 2010. Annie was also appearing on several television series alongside her movie appearances. And some of these include three episodes of Melrose Place in 2009, two episodes of Entourage in 2010, and from 2010 to 2011, the popular role she played and for which she's mostly known today, Maya Word, on the ABC soap opera General Hospital. Other television series to her credit include, but not limited to, The Game, Charlie's Angels, and Beauty and the Beast. Annie Ngozi Ilonze continues to take giant strides in the movie industry, thereby making Nigeria proud. Now let us take some more of those interesting comments on our feedback segment. We are thankful to you for this feedback you sent to us. Do you have any more comments to pass on? Guests you would like to see on the program? Or even things you would like for us to change or improve upon? Please get across to us on www.facebook.com forward slash moviestoday.nta and on Twitter is at NTA Movies Today. Or you can email us at nta nigeria movies today at gmail.com. Or better still, send an SMS to 080 4586. With that, we draw the curtain on this week's episode of Nigeria Movies Today on the network service of the NTA. Let's do this again same time next week. Till then. Have a fantastic time. I'm Lucy Olubi. Bye for now. <laughs>